Okay, uh, so this week we will talk about a different or the special type of the data visualization. So that is to visualize spatial data. Uh, so there will be a slightly uh, uh, different principles in creating those maps and comparing to the other uh, professional geographic tools. Tableau now has some very great and also powerful visualization functions that allow us to, to create very professional and also beautiful maps. Uh, so before I start, uh, let's just watch um, this video. Good morning, John. Today I'm going to introduce you to some maps. 42 maps that help me understand the world and my place in it. Maps are an amazing kind of art. They tend to represent reality, but they don't have to. They can put lots of information into perspective. They can be extremely information dense, and I love information density, which is why I cut all the breaths out of my videos. Historical maps don't just tell you about the world. They tell you about the world that they were created during, which is really amazing. And not just what the world looked like back then, but also how little we knew about the world back then. When I'm reading Game of Thrones, I'm always super frustrated because they haven't mapped the whole world yet. And I'm like, if you go west from Westeros, what's over there? It's just amazing to realize that the majority of people who lived in the world so far didn't know what the whole world looked like. That just, it seems terrifying to me. But once we had the global maps, we started using them for more than just representing the world so you could navigate it or divide it up into things that were owned by different people and countries. It became an interesting and useful way to display and understand data about the world. Population probably being the most obvious example. Here's the world split up into seven different regions, each with about one billion people. And yes, that is North and South America and Australia just making up one of them. Australia is mostly empty. Only 2% of people live in the highlighted area. Inside this circle, there are more people living than outside of that circle. Actually, it's this circle because things get distorted when you take a globe and unwrap it into a flat rectangular map. Which is why this weird curvy line is actually the longest straight line you can sail without running into land. Here it is actually projected onto a globe. See? Straight line. The sailing route is only possible, of course, because the Earth is mostly water, which becomes more evident when you look at the places that you could actually make an Earth sandwich. By which I mean that there is actually land on both sides of the planet in those places. Maps can also show preferences of course, for alcoholic drinks, for sides of the road, for how to pronounce caramel or caramel, or what to call cola soda pop cokes or systems of measurement, and yes, the U.S. is lagging a little bit behind in the metric system there, also in maternity leave, also in executing juveniles. It's a little embarrassing. World Mapper is an amazing website and software tool that distorts the world based on data. Because really, is the amount of land a country has the most important thing about that country? Of course it's not. Here, the world is morphing from a map that shows the amount of land that each country has to the amount of people that each country has. While in this World Mapper map, we see the number of internet users swelling from 2000 to 2007. These moving maps that stretch to the dimension of time are some of my favorites. For example, this one that shows internet usage over a 24 hour period, and this one that shows global flights over a 24-hour period. Whoa. Now, as much as maps can help us understand the world, they can also distort our perceptions of the world. For example, the Mercator map projection, which we often use, stretches out the world at the poles. In this map, Africa looks like it's about the size of Greenland, but in fact, Africa is big. Very big. The continent of Africa is bigger than the United States, France, Germany, Spain, the UK, all of Eastern Europe, China, and India. What? Also, north being up is completely arbitrary. Uh, and it's kind of convenient, it turns out, because most people actually do live in the Northern Hemisphere. In the Western world, we started out with North being up, with Ptolemy, but then we switched so that East was up, so that when you said to Orient, to Orient your map, you were pointing toward the Orient. We switched back to the North being on top because we got obsessed with the Greeks during the Renaissance, if you were wondering. We live in a big complicated world, sometimes wonderful, sometimes terrible, always impossible to understand completely. But the people who use these data and these tools to make these constructions of reality so that we can better understand our world are some of the heroes of the modern age. Hats off to them and to our ever-changing wonderful world. John, I'll see you on Tuesday. Good morning, John. Today All right. Uh, so, uh, if a picture is worth a thousand words, and then a map is worth a thousand uh, cells. So where um, show, we can maps can help us to see the patterns over different places. Okay, and map is also geographic representations of the culture and the physical environment. 
OK, so we can use different colors, different symbols to represent different variables that are all over the world. OK, and you may already heard that uh, when we're talking about map, and there's a very important concept called coordination system. OK, the reason we are uh, need that is because our Earth is a 3D object. OK, um, and however, it is to be more complicated. It is not a perfect 3D globe. It is actually like this. So the Earth is is a very irregular 3D shape. OK, so that make uh, locating the positions on the Earth a little bit complicated. And the most common way to locate uh, the positions is by using the coordination system, which uh, one of the coordination system is called geographic coordination system. So that is using the latitude and also longitude. OK, so for example, any places that on on the Earth can be represented by or can be located by a pair of those numbers. So one for latitude and one for longitude. Uh, so that's why we have this coordinate system, because you, you can imagine that when we have the different data set, they talking about the same place, for example, Virginia. And when you bring the data set to create maps, so you want to make sure that both Virginia on different data set will match with each other. So that is the reason that why, why we have this coordinate system. So coordinate system is a reference system that is used to represent the locations of the geographic features. So that can make sure that geographic data sets will use common locations. OK, so there are two types of the geographic coordination, uh, coordination system. So the first one is geographic coordination system. So that is also GCS, which is using the latitude and longitude that we just mentioned earlier. And the second one is called projected coordination system, or that is also called PCS. OK, and if you are in the minor of geography and you may have heard that one a lot in GRS. So basically, the idea is that we know that the Earth is a 3D sphere. So we imagine that we have a bubble that inside of the Earth and we have a 2D map so that the bubble will project light and uh, the, the object on the 3D sphere will be projected onto this 2D map. OK, so such mathematic um, projection that projects 3Ds into this two dimensional coordination system is called PCS. OK, uh, so just uh, sum up so that PCS versus uh, GCS. So uh, GCS are using degrees, latitude, and longitude. Um, for PCS, we can use meters, miles, etc. Okay, so uh, because we're using PCS, so it is more accurate to measuring distance. Well, you may be wondering how that can be more accurate. So that is because for different places, okay, we are using different type of PCS. So for example, if we want maps of the position that uh, in this um, in this place, then we will make a projection that like this. OK, and now project place in those places will have positions will have the least distortions. OK, so this may sound like a very, very um, abstract, but we are not going to give that type uh, um, uh, to uh, uh, to that deep. So just remember that we do have two types of the coordination system and TCS is always preferred. And when you are using professional ArcGIS tools, so normally we prefer use TCS if, if it is possible. And however, so we can always, uh, when we have GCS, we can always calculate PCS based on existing GCS. In Tableau, however, um, to my knowledge, so Tableau only support GCS, so display the map based on the latitude and also longitude.